Okay, I'm doing it. Hi, I'm Mira Kaplan, uh, and I'm going to be teaching baking. Uh, I'm half Romanian on my mother's side, and this is a recipe that um, it loosely translates to like cake or pie with fresh fruit, and in Romanian it's a frijitura with fruit. And um, I'm going to make it just but uh, any stone fruit works. And um, yeah, so let's go. Can you explain what stone fruit is? It's a fruit with a stone inside, like a peach or a apricot or a plum. You open it and there's a hard seed in the middle, uh, compared to like an apple where there's multiple seeds. Like, yeah, and they basically have a similar texture and they are uh, really nice in the summer, uh, depending on where you are, but where I'm from, they're really nice in the summer. So, um, this is like a sort of meringue based thing, so it's really fluffy. So there's a ton of eggs in it, um, eight specifically. So we're gonna start with um, separating the eggs and you need um, two bowls. Uh, one has to be like somewhat big enough for um, all of the yolks and also some oil because there is going to be uh, some oil that you have to mix into the egg yolks. And the other one has to be big enough to contain like the entirety of the batter because you get the meringue base you add the rest of the things into that bowl. So yeah, I'm gonna be cracking these eggs now. Uh, people vary on how they separate eggs, but um, I always learn to crack them on the rim and I found a lot of success with doing it like this. Miruna, can you take the, 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 hand, the processor away from, not the processor, the mixer, because you can't see what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if you want to, yeah, that's it. So Mira has now a yolk in her hands. Yeah, I don't want to jostle it too much because uh, you don't want to get any yolk into meringue. Uh, can you explain what the meringue is? I don't know, just like let's have some conversation here. So meringue is whipped egg yolk, egg white, the other one. Um, it's whipped egg white and um, there are three stages of it uh, depending on how long you whip it. And the one we're going to is gonna be uh, stiff peaks, which I'll explain when we get like anywhere close to that. Uh, but right now, I'm cracking the eggs. Um, you can also like, uh, if you crack the egg like perfectly in half, like um, move it from half to half of the eggshell. And um, I can try doing that, but sometimes it leads to the uh, breakage of the yolk. You don't want that. So like this kind of action, see that? But I really do prefer this because I can feel when um, the white separates from the yolk and sometimes it really grabs onto it. Okay, I saw something in the chat. Uh, I'm gonna, I'll wash my hands so I can look at it. Well, basically what I said is I love the meringue but I still don't know how to make the... <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm going to go through it. I just, I haven't finished, um, yeah, I haven't finished, um, like, cracking the eggs. So, like, yes, I'll, I'll explain more granularly when we're in the, like, process of it. It's basically just whipped egg whites and sugar, uh, and you just keep whipping it with something like this. You can do it manually, but it, with a manual whisk, but it does take considerably longer. <laughs> And the like separating eggs just takes practice and kind of like feeling for it. This is a bit hard because you are the only one doing it, but it 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 it's fun to look at you doing it. Well, I'm I'm happy to hear it. Um, so yeah, just gonna keep doing this. Uh, I'm pretty sure that you can buy like separate egg whites, but this recipe also uses the yolks, so I wouldn't recommend that for this. 
Um, so that's why I have two bowls. I have to save both because they both come into different parts of the recipe because you want to end up with something with a really fluffy texture and get a lot of air in it, which is why you start with the meringue base and then add the yolk later on. Because uh, something about, <laughs> I'm not too familiar with the chemistry of it, but something about the fat uh, doesn't let it aerate quite as much as a meringue. So that's why you start with that. And okay. Yeah, six. So there's two more. <laughs> this is the longest part. So Mira, can you say something about yourself? Just what you're like, what school that you are a senior? How come you're doing this? Why are you like you? What what's back baking than you? Um, I really like baking because like. Sometimes you can get like really bogged down with like intellectual tasks or things that don't have like a clear finish line. And um, baking is like you follow directions for like 20, 30 minutes. And then at the end of it, you have something that like, you know is good because you can eat it and you can taste it and you can give it to other people. And you just have a like a, tangible thing that proves that you are capable of making something good. So that's why I like it. Uh, and she does a lot of it, like every day. <laughs> Sometimes hours on end. <laughs> you like that too, Rafa? It's amazing. Yeah, but you do too. How come you're baking? Um, I pretty like it. I usually do bread. Uh, for the ah. family, man. yeah. I yeah, like to do yeah. Bread. Share your share your starter. After, I mean, oh, okay. what have been doing? Because oh yeah, I, mean, I, like, I like to mess around with the recipe with the bread. Sometimes I'm taking a recipe, and each time I'm doing two breads, one a normal one, and one that's a crazy experiment. And sometimes it's a flop, or sometimes uh, it turns out great. I mean, that's how you learn. That's one of the most important things. Is like a cook and a baker, which is to be adaptable. So this is my sourdough starter. It's not much to look at, but um, it I've had it since October, so. But say how you did it, Mira. Um, you basically just mix stuff together, uh, like flour, um, some sugar, I'm pretty sure. And I don't think it starts with any commercial yeast. I think it just starts with flour. Um, yeah. I can get the book that I learned it from, but. Yeah, I but you you feed it every what? How often? Uh, when I remember to, but in the beginning it was something like every day, and now it's every day ish. And if I don't want to for a while, I'll leave it in the fridge because it grows slower there because the yeast is alive in there, and that's how it ferments. So um. So what does it mean to feed it? Can you I put a bunch of flour and water in there and I mix it uh, normally with my hands until it reaches uh, the right consistency, which is sort of like a thick mud type mixture, uh, still sort of like watery, like spreadable almost is, is how I like it to stay. And you end up discarding a lot of it because if you didn't, it would grow like so much. Keeping it in that jar requires that I get rid of about half of it a week. And so there are some like discard recipes on the internet. I like King Arthur flour, but um, yeah, discard recipes on the internet and you can make stuff like biscuits with it and it tastes like sourdough. Uh, the biscuits are tremendous, Raphael. I mean, I mean, and Justin, you guys and Tay, like you guys can talk. It's, it's really has the taste almost as if it has cheese in it, but it's no cheese in it. So uh, put it this way. Uh, we take a lot of advantage of her of her hobby. <laughs> I mean, sometimes she makes two, three things and just sort of are insanely. Anyway, go on, Mira. I'm sorry. I just I have. So, yeah. Now I've cracked all the eggs. Can you? Can you show? Uh huh. We can. I'm see. gonna try my best, but all of it's really slippery. So um. There. Yeah, yeah they're that? there. Yes, that's that's egg yolks, and then the whites are in here. And so, is this, yeah, plugged in. 
Here's this. So this is, I'm pretty sure it's called an electric whisk or like a handheld electric whisk. I don't know. We've had it for like as long as I remember and I've used it since I was a child with like frosting and stuff until I graduated to more things. So um, I'm gonna start whipping it before I add the sugar just so I don't have to like over whip it too much just because I don't, you don't want things to get over whipped. Uh, so I'm gonna start whipping it, I guess. So anybody, any, while she's whisking, because I this is, the, we can have it more interactive, otherwise it's kind of, um, let, let's, uh, I, or I can, I don't know, I can tell, actually I'm gonna tell a story, you know, so I don't put pressure on you guys. Um, basically the recipe that Mira is making right now is a recipe that I adored to eat this uh, in Romanian prajitura, which is kind of funny, it almost has the, the texture of a uh, pound cake or no not pound cake mira uh eight, it's not like pound cake it's softer than pound cake it's even softer than pound cake maybe rafael you guys have it in in france i mean for okay, sure anyway i'm gonna show the stages because this is the um foamy stage it's the first one okay it's sort of the loosest one it looks like foam like sea foam or whatever and um that's yeah. something about banana bread. It's what? That sounds awesome. Banana bread and ambrosia. That's the one with meringues in it. Which one is ambrosia? I don't remember. I don't know. I don't know if what you're talking about. What so ambrosia is like, yeah. um, so it's a recipe that was made based off a of thing that was made up for a book series, uh, Percy yeah. Jackson and the Olympians. Yeah. And so it's basically like a cookie, but it has coconut in it. Cool, because I've heard of like ambrosia salad, but that seems to be a different thing. It's like whipped cream and fruit. It's sort. completely different. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, I'm, I'm familiar with the Greek concept of ambrosia. So it makes sense that it's for that. Um, oh, oh, I can't. Uh, all right. Uh, no, keep doing it, Mira. Um, so this recipe, I just want, I can't help sharing this because um, whoever was, and Justin, I think you left a bit early, the, and I still encourage you particularly to stay with the creative writing because I have, a, I have this hunch that you are a tech guy, and I think that, or something more in your head kind of things, so I feel like creative writing would really really be cool for you because you're there and I was very happy you're there. Justin, I'm talking to you. <laughs> so, um, so come back to it. Anyway, to, to say, I don't know if you're there when I mentioned my grandmother, because actually Goldie gave us a, an exercise and I'm actually participating as a participant, not just a co-host because um, anyway, and the exercise was about a memory that's tactile and, and, and it's experience, you know, not just tactile, but that involves senses, the hearing, the touch, uh, smell and all of that. And baking, and anyway, cooking in general is exactly that, where you engage, you know, touching, smelling, tasting. So it's extraordinarily, um, like it goes and, this is what I like, I'm a therapist, by the way. So one thing that I have a lot in, uh, I use this. You know what this is, right? It's the brain. It's a model of the brain. So basically, you guys, a lot of the information, it goes into the middle brain, which is, and certainly uh, the lower. So you know, the brain has three parts. It has the, the reptilian brain, which is here at the base. And the reptilian brain is about basic functions, breathing, uh, um, heartbeat, all of that, and uh, temperature control. And then in the middle, this, so from here, here, is the midbrain. And the midbrain, why is it important? And of course, that top, top layer here is the, it's what makes us human. But basically, two thirds of our brain, so from here down, it's shared with mammals, okay? Why am I telling you this story? Well, in the midbrain is all this information, which is, you know, cause a lot of, uh, even the, the way memory is stored, is stored in our, uh, where we are not conscious of it unless we recall it, 
with the higher part of our brain. You know, if we want to, and, and some memories you can't recall at all, but you can recall it sensorially. Why? Because the information actually is in that part of the brain stored to a certain amount and the body informs it. So the body, how does the body inform it? Inform it through, you know what this continues into? Who knows what goes down from here? It goes down the back. Yeah, so what's the back if it goes down the back? What do you call that? Come on. I don't know. What is, know what, what, what stored, what stored? Spine. The spine, yeah. It's the, it's the, it's the uh, you know, vertebrae, right? And mm -hmm. within the vertebrae, you have the, the spine going with a lot of nerves, yeah. right? With a lot of extensions that go all the way into your hands, your nose, and everywhere, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's extraordinarily powerful, this exercise, you know? So Mira, sugar. But show the stage. Where are you right now? When you're uh, Yeah, I, you were just going on. So I didn't want to interrupt you for too Please long. interrupt me. This is interrupt. Oh. I so, um, yeah, it's at Soft Peaks, which is, yeah, which is why it's sliding around in the bowl so much. Okay, um, show it more. Mira, show it more. Show it. I don't want to drop meringue all over my computer, but um, I will try. Here, look at that. It's okay. still kind of foamy and it's sliding around. Um, so I'm going to add the sugar so that it'll get shinier instead of just, because it's really frothy right now. Uh, which is how it gets. Mira, and can you add sugar? Mira, yeah. can you uh, uh, put the computer a bit so we see your face? We don't see your face. Well, it, that's yeah. it. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Yeah. So I'm gonna add the sugar. Um, this recipe is from Romania. It was written by a Romanian woman. So it's got slightly non-traditional measurements. So it's got 16 tablespoons which is, I don't know, something like a cup, but it's, it's 16 tablespoons. So I add about four at a time uh, before I mix it, just because you're supposed to mix it in gradually. So it's two. Three. Four. So I'm gonna do that four more times. No, three more times. Seven right? also. You said 16, so you did one set of four and you do it three more, right? Yeah, three more times, sorry. I multiply it by four. Um, so, you nice. know. So, while I do this, yeah. so. so my point with all that introduction that I was saying with me like adding her sugar is that memories which are sensorial are going extraordinarily deep into your brain and and actually they're amazing because um, uh, uh, what happens it's literally connecting you to the body okay to the body memory um, and um, why it's important that I mean, why it's important, why am I even bringing all of this? Is that the memories of my childhood when my grandmother was, was cooking and baking really helped me heal my trauma of defecting from Romania. So I left Romania, I ran away from a communist country with my mom, and I lost a lot of people. I left a lot of people behind. My father, my actually the grandmother that I'm talking about. So a lot of people in my life have, have passed away without me having a completion, a finality. You know, if you guys have some trauma, you know, or you lose somebody dear, you have a chance of going to the funeral. Maybe they are sick, and then you go to their hospital. Anyway, there is a there is a transition. I didn't have that with a lot of people in my life, therefore trauma. And, and um, my memories of her when I cook, and the, actually and also the loss of my country, Rafael, you, you live in your country, but the loss of the country itself, my language, all of that, uh, cooking Romanian recipes, teaching my kids to love them um, uh, during holidays, it literally helped me heal. It help and healing, uh, and then I'm gonna totally let Mira take over. Healing means literally connecting 
trauma usually is locked in the middle brain and I'm other times I might tell you guys that but it's locked in the middle brain and the whole thing of healing is when the middle brain gets connected to the conscious brain which is basically um, our prefrontal cortex all of you uh, minus uh, minus Marlene um, but, and Raphael is almost there but not quite four years short you guys still don't have a complete prefrontal cortex. Yeah, Justin, how old are you? 15. And Tay? 13. Okay, so, okay, so, and Raphael is 22. So anyway, yeah. the thing is, the prefrontal cortex develops fully by the time you are 26. Until then, you have partial brain. Sorry, but that's a story. And most of it, if you find yourselves very emotional, is because a lot of this is, is in, in, uh, in uh, act, active. Mira, let me know when you want to add your stuff. I keep them up. Right. Left, so. Yeah, four more, okay. One more. One more, okay. Um, so the story, I can't und, uh, underline enough the value of putting your hands the way Raphael is saying, in, in flour and water and mixing and messing things up. And um, actually a very funny thing that happened between me and Mira right before the class is that I said to her, oh, you need to maybe set it up all this pretty and whatever. She says, that's not how I work. I like to be messy. So. Why is that a surprise? It shouldn't be a surprise. That's what I, uh, oh, what are you doing, Raphael? What's that? I'm plugging in my phone. It's out of juice. <laughs> I thought you were bringing some sort of uh, machinery. So um, if you notice, it's so like sticky and shiny. But it's okay, so, uh, Mira, wait a second, because Raphael wants to learn how to do this meringue. Hey, Raphael, It's already done. You see it? Oh, I think. I don't know. Raphael, are you seeing it? Yep, I do. So she added sugar. Mira, talk. Yep, I added 16 tablespoons in total of sugar, four at a time, so four times. Um, and now it's so like shiny and sticky and firm. Can, can you bring it closer to the screen? That it's hanging off the beaters, like that. I see. Yep, so I'll bring the bowl closer. And now I'm at less of a risk of ruining my laptop. So look at that. It's sliding around less, but still a little bit. And there's firm peaks in the middle of it. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's standing up by itself. And it's shiny because of the It's shiny because of the sugar. Yeah. So uh, that should be. And you say four teaspoons at a time because in between you whisk it more, right? You yes. Simulate it. Yeah. Okay, so um, how, does that look, how does that spoon look like? What you said that's for four spoons, but it's a special spoon, it's a big, uh, it's the big spoon, the tablespoon. Okay, uh, and it's a measuring tablespoon. Yeah, that's a, a big spoon. Um, yeah, yeah, Mira, we still can see you like your half of your head, or at least uh, okay. no, no, your head is chopped off. All right, there's so much like hard for me to reach it from there. Oh, so yeah, um, it's a tablespoon. Okay, got it. And so the next thing, the beaters actually don't come into this anymore. So I'm gonna put them in the sink because it's important to clean up as you go along. So yeah. the next, the rest of it uses a good old wooden spoon. Mm -hmm. So um, we're gonna transition to messing with the yolks. So I'm not gonna slide them around too much because they're eight sacks of fluids. I'm not gonna mess with that. So basically you just wanna stir it a little bit and break up all the yolks until it becomes a homogenous mixture, which just basically means it's all one color. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna try to do this. 
Yeah, so it's all one color. Next time, Mira, you need a, need somebody to help you. Again, your head is cut. I know. I'll deal with it in a second. I'm just going to get another measuring. <laughs> well, nobody promised a professional cooking class, but close to that. Just get a book and put the... Just get a book and put the laptop on top of it. Oh, yeah, Mira, get a book and put the laptop higher up. Great. I'll do that. I said it's more for the fun, the class, exactly. I think. Absolutely. I mean, this is, uh, and anyway, as we move along to the next one, I'm really happy that she accepted. So I don't know if you see, but in the back on the stove, will you see the, the paper uh, thing? Yeah. There's a black, uh, a black pot. All the way at the back uh, against the white. Yeah, that one, Mira. Yeah. That's Mira's favorite. What is that? The Dutch oven? Yeah, it's a cast iron Dutch oven, and it has a skillet, which is the lid of it. And I use this for baking sourdough bread and also for a lot of other things. Um, cast iron is cool because you don't wash it with soap. It's just every once in a while you um, heat the oven to like hot, like medium heat, uh, basically the same as you would for like any other recipe, like 375. And then you slather it with oil and then you bake it, just the skillet with nothing in it except the oil for about an hour and then let it cool in there upside down. And then this sort of film bakes onto it and it makes it sort of nonstick, like a nonstick pan. And you have to keep doing that in order to take care of the cast iron. So I think that everyone's alive. 375 Fahrenheit, how much is that in Celsius? Yeah, I don't um, know. I'm totally lost with the imperial system. I'll just Google it. After 30 years, I did this. Oh, uh, Justin, are you from Canada? Yes. So you guys also have the metric system, right? Or the... Is, as Raphael calls it, imperial. What do you call it? Uh, imperial system. I know on my metric cards, my, I have an metric, American yeah. card, my imperial and metric. Some yeah. people call it customary, but that's a silly term for it because it's not the custom anywhere but America. Okay, so 375 Fahrenheit is 190.556 Celsius. So oh, that's what, what, what? It's what? Repeated? Like, how much Celsius? 190.556. Got it. 190. So, do you guys know the formula to, to uh, maybe some of you, because the one already in uh, 9 over 5. Yes. 9 over 5? Or how do, I don't remember how. That. I think uh, Fahrenheit is 9 fifths Celsius plus 32. That's it. Yeah. That's something like that. Yeah. So, you always know that. Uh, you it shows up in a lot of math tests, surprisingly. A lot of standard tests I've taken about math, that formula shows up. Yeah. I don't know why they do that. They could just turn into metric and we all be on the same page without messing around with this. Yeah. Okay. America. Um, so I'm going to measure out. This part is metric, so you'll be happy about that. Because um, it's a European recipe, just some parts, you know? Um, yeah, so I'm going to measure out 125 milliliters of oil. Um, you want to use a neutral oil. Uh, I normally use canola oil, but now I'm using sunflower oil because I'm adding canola oil. But this works the same amount. It's just a good neutral oil. Like, you don't want to use olive oil because it's very flavorful. And we're not doing this for the flavor. We're doing it for the fat content to, keep, to add moisture to the cake. Mm -hmm. So Sunflower oil is really good. Yeah, that's it's phenomenal. That's what it is, I think. It's what? I just saw the sunflower on the bottle. Yeah, sunflower is awesome. That, that's all we had in Romania, sunflower oil. Great. My favorite is, my favorite is peanut oil. Yeah? Wow, nice. I don't think I'm, I'm in, in my family. My dad really enjoys olive oil or how you call it. I don't know how, how you call that, those... Uh, those green things with, with, with something inside, I don't 
The whole, the Olives? Whole, like, Are Olives they green and, and then they have like a seed or like a pit or a seed in them? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, and then sometimes they'll like put a pimento inside it. Yeah, yeah. that's olives. Yeah, those are olives. Yeah. So, uh, my father loves olive oil, olive oil, and it's amazing. Yeah. So I Justin, like it too. Justin, uh, you were about to say something, and I think we interrupted you. Oh, I was just going to say uh, peanut oil is great for French fries. Oh, yeah. good to know. Good to know. Wow. And did, you, okay. and did you know that French fries were actually from Belgium? Yes, correct. That's yes, it's it's weird. Every yeah. every every uh, like the Hawaiian wait. pizza. Yeah, every Belgian restaurant they give you a whole thing with with yummy. Mira, continue because it seems like you're waiting for something. Sure. Uh, yeah, a lot of countries attribute. Uh, they they want to lay claim over certain foods, but some of this stuff, like you can't really trace it back very easily. But anyway, uh, so we're gonna do something called emulsifying, which is basically forcing oil into something. Um, like, it pretty, I think egg is a very good emulsifier, but it essentially is something that mixes together two things that don't normally mix, like oil and water. You can do uh, mechanical, uh, Emulsifying with oil and water, like a lot of salad dressings force uh, water content and oil content to mix together. And if you leave it for long enough, it'll separate again. But this is not that difficult because they're two different fats. So I'm gonna add a little oil at a time until it becomes a homogenous mixture, which again means that it's the same color. So you won't see the oil and the egg yolk as two different things. It'll be more like one mixture. So I'm going to add it a little bit at a time. Stirring often, if not constantly, so. Just going to make sure that it ends up the same color and the same texture, basically, because the oil goes in still looking like oil and it looks like it kind of separates at first because they don't immediately mix, so you have to force it. Yeah, there's not... It's a pretty uh, simple recipe, but you just have a lot of, like, stirring periods. So this is one of them. And so this is almost done. And once it's done, I'm going to add this into this and try to mix it until it's all one color again. So I'm gonna try and mix it all together one at a time. A little at a time. One is kind of meaningless in this respect. So we're gonna try and get all the way to the bottom. Just really mixing it. Ends up a nice light yellow mixture. And you'll notice the volume, or I'll just tell you, that the volume has increased a lot due to the air that we added during the making of the meringue. So, um. Mira, from time to time, show it to us, okay? What? Show it to us from time to time how it looks like. Yeah. I'll try not to splash the mixture on us. Yeah, I'm trying my best. Uh, <laughs> didn't advertise the splash though. Sorry. I would freak out if it comes out of my of my phone. <laughs> yeah. So that's why we needed a big bowl in the beginning because it gets yeah. pretty big after a while. Because of all the air that was added into the egg whites. <laughs> it's incredibly fluffy. I so recommend you guys eat this. Because um, you can make it with cherries, you can make it with plums, you can make it with apricots. I, I think my favorite, Mira, do you agree, is with apricots? Um, uh, I don't really have an opinion. I tend to mix them, but it really depends on what we have in the house. Because I've, I've been trying more to not like... <laughs> 
to, to use the ingredients that we have because sometimes when you're like just learning how to cook or bake you'll like see a recipe and be like now I have to go grocery shopping for these specific things but like I said earlier being an adaptable cook is one of the most important things because you're not always going to have access to all of the ingredients that you could possibly want so you learn to make do with what you have and most of the staple ingredients are in this. This is a pretty simple recipe, actually, all things considered. The only thing that's odd about it is the amount of eggs, of which there are eight. So, yeah, the next thing is we're going to use another bowl for it. Um, I keep my flour in this thing just because it's easier to measure out of it, but this is just standard all purpose flour. And this is also 16 tablespoons. So 16 large spoons of flour and um, most recipes, uh, so I'm going to do it now, most recipes require that you mix together the dry ingredients, which is all of the powders except for the sugar, um, in a bowl before adding to it, which I think is to make it more unified, but if I'm being honest, I often forego that step when I'm baking alone, and so you don't have to if you don't want to dirty another bowl, but in the interest of being as thorough as possible, I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna measure out 16 tablespoons of flour and mix it together with baking powder and salt, which are the dry ingredients in this recipe. Two. Who bakes among you? I know Rafael does. Justin, Kay, do you guys at all bake or cook or? Come on, don't even do the dinner. It's what? Justin and Tay, do you guys at all cook or bake or anything? Sometimes. Sometimes. This was Tay? Who talked? That was. Yeah. Wow, your voice. Quite quite a nice voice for a voiceover. I really like the the the, the deep voice. Anyway, um sometimes. What do you do sometimes? Okay, what do you do sometimes? What do you um, Sometimes I make omelets and like cookies or something. Oh, nice. Stuff nice. like that. Nice. Yeah, my son Ari. Um, God, Mira, when do you think Ari started to do anything much? Uh, I think now because he, he's at college and he does his own thing. Hello, Eric. <laughs> Eric, come and say hi. <laughs> One <laughs> second, stick your head. Hi, everybody. I didn't know I was on the uh, camera. That's yeah, a big window. How, are you Hello there? How many people are in the class? Uh, three. Not, not much. Excellent. Sure Welcome. Many. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, we'll so. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice. Nice to see you, too. <laughs> <laughs> that one's a nice one. <laughs> I was quite surprised. <laughs> I guess we live together. It's a family thing. Yes. Oh, yeah. We all live in the same house. So, um, so we're also going to add vanilla extract. Um, I always add a ton, so I don't normally measure it. But if you want to measure it, something like two teaspoons, small spoons, or a big spoon, it doesn't matter. Just like a, a little bit. Sure, that's enough. Mira, can you share your take on, on vanilla and how do you choose what kind of vanilla you're using? Oh, I don't. Um, well, I really like the taste of vanilla extract. Um, it's important to get one that you like the taste of, basically. It's kind of like olive oil in that respect, where like it kind of has to do with your personal preference. And um, it can just really like enhance the flavor of anything like you even people think of like chocolate and vanilla as like inherently contrasting flavors but things with chocolate like brownies or a chocolate cake often also have a little bit of vanilla extract too because it just deepens and enhances the flavor and I love it I always add more than the recipe calls for and the the only bad thing is that it's uh partially like um alcohol because that's how you get the extract so it it'll, it'll end up with like kind of a gross taste if you add too much so you have to have a delicate hand but a little more doesn't hurt so 
yeah, I'm adding some of that. And so here I have my flour, and I'm going to measure out metric system again, uh, 10 grams of baking powder uh, as opposed to baking soda. You can substitute uh, baking soda for baking powder, but you have to divide by three. Um, and vice versa, if you want, if you, if it calls for baking soda and you only have baking powder, then you multiply the amount it calls for by three. But I have baking powder and it calls for baking powder, so What's the difference? Is one, what's the difference? Uh, one is more pure, I'm pretty sure. Because if you look at the ingredients, baking powder has cornstarch, monocalcium phosphate, and baking soda. So baking powder contains baking soda, but it also has other things. Okay. But in terms of the cooking, Mira, what do you They're think? They're both leaveners. They both do the same thing. Yeah, but one is more potent, is it not? I, I believe I said that. Uh, oh, baking, soda, baking soda is more potent because it's a purer form of the mixture. This has baking soda in it, but it also has other things. So baking soda in its pure form, you need to add less of it because it's included in this. You know, it's the same amount that you would add. So okay. I'm, I'm just not sure then why have the other ingredients? Like what? Oh, because sometimes you need less potency, right? Um, I assume the cornstarch and the monocalcium phosphate are pulling some of their weight here. I'm not entirely positive on the chemistry of it, but cornstarch, in my experience, thickens mixtures. So right. perhaps it has to do with that. Um, it's just a different sort of thing. Uh, most, I also think some are less harsh. Uh, sometimes baking soda can have a grain that can um, upset the mixture. I basically listen to the, to the ingredients that it calls for and just use what you have. And there's adaptability again. Substitutions are really important. Um, like with everything, you can substitute uh, most things, uh, but you just have to know how exactly you're gonna affect the texture as well as the taste of your resulting products. Like if you're substituting something that is primarily solid with something that is primarily liquid, you have to make up for that with some other solid ingredients like um, sugar versus honey. Honey is liquid and sugar is solid. So if you were substituting them, you would have to keep that in mind. But, yep. <laughs> okay, well what are you doing now? You're adding- Add some salt to the dry mixture. Just a, a good, good amount, generous amount of salt. Um, and then I'm gonna mix it together, just to make it uniform. Explained earlier, I don't normally do this, but it's, it can't harm. So I'm going to add a little of this at a time and mix it into this uh, middle stage. I'll show it to you now. Um, it's a nice light yellow color. So yeah, I'm going to be adding some of this to it a bit at a time. Um, you can take over for this part if you want to. Uh, uh, yeah, all right. So um, I guess uh, for uh, next recipe, we can uh, do a bit some research. What's the difference between baking soda and baking yeah. uh, powder? Or Justin, who is great at finding information, not the first time, uh, he can do it as we speak. Um, it's not always was like. Not just the difference, but the difference in use. Yeah. Yeah, of course, different in use. That's what I meant. Correct, Mira. Mm -hmm. Mira is very particular with language, at least certainly not for somebody who's <laughs> English as a second language, but it's, you use pride in language. No, you love language. You like, but like, let's share it. Mira, actually, um, Mira, what you don't know, Raphael is German, living in France. Oh, dear. Mira went to Germany last year, Raphael, and was there for five weeks in Berlin studying German. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Mira, can you say something about that? Something about it? Um, well, the reason I started to learn German is because one day my phone glitched and it changed its language to German. And um, I didn't know that could happen. It's never happened to anyone else I've ever known. But um, it, it happened to me. It's never been on German. 
I don't know anyone who's German, but, um, well, I do now, but, you know. Um, so that happened randomly one day, and uh, I decided why not learn it. I had to learn enough to, like, get back to settings and change it manually. So I um, decided, like, well, why not? Because at the time I was taking basketball, but I was very bad at basketball. So I mostly worked the concession stand and took mm -hmm. in tickets and uh, watched the game. So I downloaded Duolingo onto my phone and I started learning German, um, kind of badly. Oh, and that dude that just passed is my son, but he yes, was Anyway. Um, yeah, so um, I started learning it basically on a whim and then I just kind of kept doing it and I just enjoyed the process. So last summer, uh, we found a program that uh, lets you take an intensive language course while living in the country. I think it's uh, international, but this is a chapter that was in Berlin. And so I stayed with a guest family um, in the middle ring of Berlin. So it's three uh, sections and like A, B, and C. And I was staying in B. <laughs> Right, that's the yeah, thing. So that was my understanding of it. Mira at the time was she 15, she's now six yep. and a half. Uh, and um, so yeah. one of I'm the others. I'm not supposed to be there because it was 16 plus, but my mom uh, haggled with them and let me go. So I was the youngest person there by at least half a month, considerably more than others. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I went to um, a school like right in the center of Berlin, like right next to Potsdam or Platz. And um, yeah, I went there every day and I learned some German. I'm terrible at the speaking part of it, uh, but comprehension, not bad. So that's uh, where I'm at. That's right. Uh, that's right. Uh, if it's so Rafael, try to speak you some words. Speak any German? Rafael, any German? Do you yeah, if you German? want. Yeah, speak something. Do you just want, uh, just, what should I say? Should I introduce myself? Yeah, introduce yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Guten Tag, ich heiße Rafael Jan. Ich bin 22 Jahre alt und ich wohne jetzt seit, äh, seit langer Zeit in Frankreich. Und jetzt to any class über spoken. Well, basically what I said is, I know the uh, hello, I'm Mira. I understood that. <laughs> what? Can you tell? Why, did you, why don't you translate it? Just to, to uh, He introduced himself. He said what his name was and where he lives. And he said that he's in a class about bacon. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, Justin, do you speak French? Not a waste of time. Um, I, I do. I speak no, I don't. Uh, three and a half languages. That's yeah. awesome. I speak yeah. uh, French, but German, English, that. and a bit Norwegian. Oh, Norwegian. Oh, my God, we have friends in Norway. Didn't you say you were Swiss at the beginning of this? I'm, I'm Swiss. Yeah. yeah. That's what I thought. I'm a... My situation is a bit weird. Um, I have a Swiss uh, passport, but a oh. French driver's license. Wow. <laughs> but I have no French uh, passport. In Germany, I met a guy who is Swiss, so I'm vaguely familiar <laughs> with the system. Okay, so there's like a, a fourth language there, right? Like Neo-Romantic, something like that. Or am I completely off base? Something like quasi Italian, right? Rafael is for you in the question. Switzerland. Do you mean Switzerland? Yeah. I, yeah, in Switzerland I have three languages French, um, a German with an, it's a dialect or it's a modified German and French. Yeah. I, I can also speak that dialect because I'm from, I'm from Switzerland, but it's pretty hard to understand even for German. People. Yeah, I've heard that. I tried watching a movie and I thought it, at first I couldn't understand it at all and then I realized, I thought it was just because I was bad at German, but I realized it was Swiss German. So, 
because right. this can be pretty hard to understand. Yeah, because a lot of the vocabulary words are French. Like I think sidewalk. The translation for that is French. In the uh, yeah. sidewalk, it's trottoir. Trottoir. Yeah. That's that's yeah. uh, that's Romanian. Trottoir. Mira, in case you. Yeah, because Romanian is a Romance language, so is French. Yeah. Um, like uh, who um, speak Spanish, so we are pretty, quite few languages represented in this uh, meeting. Um, so Romania, Malin, maybe you know already, but I'm just gonna say it, it's uh, closest to Italian, then Spanish, uh, mm -hmm. then French. And supposedly Portuguese. Uh, Portuguese. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So those are the Romance languages, because they all come from Latin. Yeah, but French we have the, fa the further away from Romanian. Oh, uh, French and Italian are kind of similar, like the word for man. Yeah, so, um, similar, but I'm, what I'm saying is, is that, Mira, keep cutting, because we are coming close to cut, cut the vegetables. Okay. Um, so <laughs> here is the... Finished. Yep, finished batter. That's what the batter looks like when it's finished. So now I'm going to cut the uh, peaches, I already washed them, <laughs> so, yep, I washed my fruit. Um, this is about, I, I'm pretty sure, in my experience, um, most peaches are about 100 grams, and this recipe calls for 400 grams of fresh fruit chopped, so I'm going to chop it. Um, I have not preheated my oven because... Um, I'm not gonna bake it on this call because that would require us to sit doing nothing for 30 to 40 minutes. Well, that would be great uh, though. Really a little, yeah, but, but a little did, rambling. Mira, did you actually uh, bake it last night or not really? Yes, there's one. I will show you what the finished product looks like. Don't worry about that. But yeah, I'm just, I'm gonna prepare another one. Yeah. It's movie magic. It would be nice uh, for the minute rambling about talking uh, about. Um, yeah, that will, uh, you know what? Maybe things. next time we we did not know who's gonna come to me, but that would be fantastic if you guys are are uh, willing to hang out and and talk more and uh, then, then yeah, we can do that. That right. I just this is the first time and I had no idea uh, and certainly we nobody. You guys. Yeah, nobody nobody stops us from uh, spending more time. Uh, it doesn't have to finish in the hour um, because there's not a class right after. We have a class, by the way. <laughs> whoever wants to show up for dancing, I, Madeline, you can turn, you can you can go, but because I'm here, it's okay. So you can totally buy uh, at four. Um, and, and if we are choosing to stay longer, Marlene, you can go. So don't worry about it. Um, okay. I will stay with them. But if that's happening, okay. then I should preheat my oven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, I found that it's pretty weird why uh, I sent you the screenshot. Why maybe it's the time zone, I mean, why it's all a switch by a day. I have no, I have no idea why. I mean, the calendar, I took a look too. Uh, it, it, I don't know why it shows that way to you. Because it was also so don't, with, worry, uh, don't worry about the silly calendar. So don't mm -hmm. look at the calendar there. Just every instructor has a, 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 okay. a, a headline, no headline, whatever it's called, where basically it shows the time and the thing. So don't worry about the okay. calendar. Okay, I'm going to do my own. Yeah, so, you just have to know what I told you, which is go to the the classes, the mm -hmm. summer camp classes, and then they have all the instructions there. So yep. we're in another Fahrenheit Celsius situation. Um, I'm going to preheat my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I believe it's around 180 degrees Celsius, but do yes. not quote me on that. Okay. I think oh. How we would say it in French, a la louche, like uh, that's, I don't know how you call it, it's that large thing with a handle on. What? Uh, in, fr in French, you would say, uh, you see, it's roughly, it, there is a phrase that's called a la louche that would say uh, roughly. Oh, uh, I don't know cool. how you call it, that, uh, yeah. that, that thing, well, it's, uh, it's that big and there's a handle on it. But what is it? I can't show it. Okay, yeah, I have to show us. 
because uh, I have no idea what you're describing. It's an object that I have no idea what it looks like or the use of it. Um, I think maybe ladle, right, Justin? Could it well, be? I have the temperature conversion right here. Yeah, it's a ladle, right, Justin? Would you call a ladle? Uh, I, one second, let me look at this. It's the thing you scoop spoon, but in that case. Uh, it, I have this, a ladle. So, it's a slightly different shape from the ladles I've seen, but correct, about right. Yeah, I have another one. You have to think of yeah, I mean, you know, that, that's Europe for you, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Weird over there. That's, that's Europe for you. Also, I adapted um, the woman who wrote the recipe. Well, that that one. I got from. Oh, that's one. Her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a ladle. Me. Yeah. Yeah, it's a ladle. Uh, Justin, can you can you uh, type it in chat? Just uh, clear oh, the, just the temperature that. conversion. Yeah, or, it's a ladle. Just type so it. it's that one. Okay, I'm saying I, it's a louche in French with a uh, Okay, so Rafael, can you also type last something that you're saying there? Because I don't, I don't understand what you are actually saying. Uh, I have oh. a oh. medium no, key. I get there's a lot of weird phrases over here. My cat is here. Can you? Oh yes. What? What's his name? Her name? His name is Percy. But Mira, look, Percy is a blue Russian like Dharma. I, well, I don't know if he's a. I don't know what kind he is because he's just like a kitten that I got for free at a like house. Yeah, it looks yeah. like a Russian. Blue. It looks. Are you already sent me a picture of it? Uh, we're going to have to show you your, uh, so keep coming at the uh, baking, and it's not necessarily the best, but we're going to bring Dharma to see Dharma. And oh, we'll, interesting. Okay. Uh, well, we're going to keep him away from the food. Yeah. But I'm right back. But and, and I sent that temperature conversion in the chat. It is about 180. I was right. Okay. Excellent. Well, Fantastic. Yes, it is almost, she was almost right. Yeah, it's one. Yeah, I wasn't perfectly correct. 176.667 Celsius. Wow. All right. And, uh, and Mira is still cutting her peaches. Yep. We're on three. Three out of four. So. Percy here is 10 weeks old. Oh, only, only. Wow. Mira, do you want to tell uh, Justin the story? Oh, you really like the Percy Jackson series. Uh -oh. Yes, that is where his name came from. All right. What is that? It's a series. It's a book series. I read all five books in five days. Awesome. Yeah, did you read them? No, but a lot of my friends were very into it. I hear the movie is not as good. There, there are two Peter Johnson movies, as we call them. Oh. Because they were so bad. But they're actually making a new live action series, and the writer of the original series is actually going to have like full oversight on it. Well, that's good. Hopefully he's as good at uh, TV writing as he is at book writing, because they can be different skills. Well, he's just there to kind of make sure everything is accurate. That's, that's smart. Accuracy is important. Uh, yeah, so Mom, what did you want me to say about the cat? Well, like the story of our cats. Oh, um, my aunt was living in, what, an apartment complex? What would you call it? Uh, yeah, she was living, uh, it was, uh, yeah. Can Some I... sort of thing. Um, she was living in a place and she found, um, for like a, a stray cat who was a mother and had four, um, kittens. And she at first contacted my parents, uh, to see if we wanted to adopt five cats. And then my dad always says that he countered with how about no cats. And then we ended up with two. So their names are Love and Dharma, because at the time we were way into Hinduism. So Dharma means duty in um, Hindu theology, if you want to call it that. Also um, Buddhism, Bu Buddhist heaven. Uh, yeah. It's an Indian ideal. Yeah, both Eric and myself. Uh, oh, you want to know a secret? Oh, my brother named him. Huh? My brother named Dharma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you want to know a secret about Eric? I'm <laughs> sure they won't. Eric, Eric, Eric used to be a Buddhist monk before me, marrying me. In Thailand. 
in Thailand. So Eric went to uh, college in Boston. He, he went to Harvard and then from there he went uh, at, um, he did uh, what is that called the world teach and he taught English in Thailand. And as he loved, loved, loved comparative religion, both Eric and I uh, majored in comparative religion in college. Then I went on and I went to dental school, but then I dropped out of dental school <laughs> uh, in my incarnation. Yeah, so many different, uh, this is for the young people who I totally encourage to, to have all kinds of courage to change paths, keep learning and keep changing and keep learning and, and things will turn out good. And I have no idea what I want. Oh, the Buddhism. Um, so. I use the oil to grease the pan and then add some parchment paper so it's easy to cut up and serve it later. So Marlene is going to go, but I'll stay and we'll finish this. Um, and uh, OK, Marlene, thank you so much. Bye, Bye everyone. everyone. Bye. Marlene, by the way, is can you, can you just a bit say something about yourself? Uh, oh, yeah. So I'll be assisting uh, Marduka with the like kind of the technical aspect of hosting the meetings. And well, I'm a little about myself. I'm from Los Angeles. I live in the San Fernando Valley. I graduated from UC Davis in community and regional development. So I'm really excited to be working um, with After School Village because I'm really interested in like the sus sustainability holistic approach that the yeah, so, so she's very she's very humble. She's not just assisting me technically now, which she is, but she's one of the uh, two college graduates that um, uh, join our team. And uh, Marlene actually worked with our graduate student uh, Anna, who I totally recommend guys take the sustainability classes, the zero waste and composting, which will happen on Friday. Mm -hmm. And um, and Anna is a graduate student, and Marlene helped her with the curriculum, with all these other things. So they all multitask, um, and uh, they are uh, college graduates. So anyway, um, yeah. okay, Marlene, we'll see you next time. Thank you. All right, sounds you. good. It was nice meeting you all. Bye. Bye. Yeah. All right, so we can um, continue this at least till Mira kind of. Mira, can you tell us what you're doing? Yeah, so I'm cutting parchment paper to put on the bottom of the pan so that the batter in the cake doesn't stick to the pan. I added some oil to the bottom to grease it so that the parchment paper doesn't stick to the pan. So um, yeah, I'm going to put it in and because there's oil there, it's going to easily sink down into it and just make a spot because I'm going to pour the batter in there. And then um, the fruit is just sort of put on top. So, Mira, show how the paper now is glued. It's quite cool. I, I don't know if you've seen it before. But it's so cool how the paper basically just the oil. And, uh, no, no. It's it 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 sort of adhesive. And it. You see? It's sinks totally, in them. The wax paper now, it's totally glued to that thing. Not wax paper, parchment paper. So, uh, got it. What's the difference? Um, wax paper is made out of wax, so it tends to melt in the oven. Oh, um, I don't know what the point of it is. I, I tried using it for cookies, but it was not, um, not ideal. So Maybe not a good idea to use something that'll melt in the oven. Yeah. <laughs> don't really want wax in your cookies. No, you really don't. Uh, it's a candle cookie. <laughs> that yeah. I have one right here. Uh, imagine <laughs> eating a like, a, like a something uh, that would yeah. not By the taste way, right. All of you look a bit more awake than other classes. Sometimes maybe it's the time. Uh, okay, Mira, do it. Continue. Okay, so I'm going to pour this batter into the um, prepared pan. So here we are. So look at the consistency. It's a nice flow, but you, you see it closer. It's so fluffy. It, uh, Sorry, guys, that you can't taste this, but it is the na nature of the beast being in different cities. So yeah. maybe that inspires you guys to go and bake. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get a spatula because it's easier. And maybe one of you are going to invent a computer with smell. Uh, I know that there are this in movies and stuff, but it's artificial smell. But somewhere where actually we can, we can 
get smell to travel through our which I don't even know if that's ever, ever going to be possible, but because I understand very little. I, 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 did, I did read about it once, and basically the reason it wouldn't be possible is because it, like you'd would, you would have to be wearing something that would kind of like deposit the smell into your face or something. Uh -huh. um, but then it would have to be holding all these different smells or something, or, or they'd all mix together, and just basically it wouldn't work. Oh, interesting. So, but you mean like a like? Well, anyway, it it's too complicated. You know, we have a madman here, not in this house, although one may argue, but uh, a madman called Elon Musk, and he has all kinds of ideas about um, about how to. I mean, I don't know what I feel about the man. He, it's a mixture. I mean, he clearly is forward thinking, but he's also mad. That's okay. not this. <laughs> Indeed, it's not. Well, yeah, yeah, he has quite interesting ideas. Okay, Mira, go yeah, on. Yeah, the kind of man to do uh, sell a frame uh, flame thrower or not a flame thrower or yes, now uh, some shorts that says it was I think it's sixty nine comma and dollars and the first one was the number of sex and the other one was the number of cannabis or something like yes, that. Yes, you're always correct. Weird ideas. I, I don't understand that thing. What's this, Mira? What's happening? So Elon Musk uh, committed fraud in order to make an internet joke. Uh, oh. On the internet, there are certain numbers that people consider to be funny because, as you mentioned, one is associated with sex and the other one is associated with marijuana. So Elon Musk uh, committed fraud in order to make his shares, I think, worth um, this number, which is 69,420. So, um, Okay, so let's go. Kind of a man baby. Okay, let's go back to the fruit. I, yeah. I, I didn't mean to take us out. Uh, my point to Elon Musk. I was, told you not to. Let the record show. Okay. I told I, not right. to open the Elon Musk discussion. Well, well, what I meant with that in my defense was literally he has this interesting idea about, uh, and I would have to give it to him something interesting, where the merging, the argument of merging the human brain with the computer. So the interesting part, so this is the thing actually even in psychology where because newer generations are spending so much time online, so much time on the computer without what we're doing right now, which is reflecting back, you know, like talking with each other, just literally staring at screens and, and getting information through, a, through, through, a artificial, or through this medium, uh, that that affects actually how we process information. So that's my only limited thing about Elon Musk, but I'm gonna move on, Mira. Take your advice. You mean, you mean Neuralink or the what? You mean, you mean Neuralink or how it's called? A humanoid? No, uh, Neuralink. Oh, Neuralink. I think it's cool. Oh, uh, it's Elon of... Musk's project. Yeah, it's called Neuralink. Got it. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. It, I would have to give it to him. There are some interesting ideas. Um, but Mira, I'm just, optimistic about that sort of thing. I'm studying it philosophically. I just have, I just have one thing to say about the like um, transporting smells through, like to different people. If they, are, if teleportation was ever invented, then it could work. Sure. <laughs> well, then but I guess you? you can. You can uh, you you guys could all be invited at my house, and we're gonna eat, and then you teleport back to. That would be amazing. <laughs> uh, it would be amazing to meet you all, guys. I'm looking forward to that at some point, but um. Yeah, I have a great overabundance of baked goods that you could take off my hands. Mm. Um. Maybe when the COVID situation is over, and when I have the funds to come over to America. That, that I, I, I can't I tell you enough that that's actually the whole purpose of After School Village is creating community. And because it's COVID and because of different countries, but this would be wonderful if you guys, some of you remain in contact. Obviously the new version of a pen pal, it doesn't, it's, yeah. not, a, it's not quite the old fashioned pen pal, but you know, you can see each other, you can talk when things open up, if you travel, you can visit each other. So we are in an international village. So I, I totally love what you just said. Um, yeah, if things open and um, you're certainly always welcome uh, to visit, to visit LA, to visit us. Um, 
Mm -hmm. Amira, uh, you're doing it too pretty. Just throw a bit more in there. Like it's, it's um, um, uh, like she knows what you're doing. Because you're doing piece by piece. She's very grab a handful of peaches and throw them on. Oh, and here I thought we were trying to drag out time. If you want me to we really want to drag out time. Yeah, we are not dragging out time. Can't even stop. <laughs> so now Mira is basically throwing things in there. No, go on. <laughs> it's bringing things around. It's like me and Justin were still in contact outside the classes. You know, the one side's going to look very different from the other. Yeah, well. <laughs> well, she's going to mix I mean, added another more, yeah. But that's okay, right? I mean, it, it, it's... I'm not much for aesthetics. I was just trying to show off for you guys, but whatever. <laughs> and something else, like, yeah, you, it, it all goes in the same place as stomach. So. That's true. It's not going to yeah. end up as pretty as this, even because um, the cake part rises up and can, um, like, subsume the fruit. So it rises mm -hmm. up. I'll show you the other one because you can barely see any fruit. Um, and and the, uh, it's something beautiful about chaotic things and and uh, sure. sort of um, um, less. I use my hands constantly in baking. You've seen me do this, and I like it because it connects me to the food more. Uh, a lot of people will be very like meticulous and very like dainty with cooking, but that's never really been my style. Like the presentation of it has always been like I've been more manual labor than like spending 10 hours like decorating a cake like that sounds hellish to me uh no offense to anybody but yeah so um this is you know it's fun for to talk about presentation of cakes it's this great to decorate the cake for fa um for a few hours and then get to see it look so nice for five minutes until you cut into it I mean, Yes. <laughs> but that, there goes the cake. <laughs> but I guess at least you can take pictures, but. Yes. Yeah, right. Mira, Mira, show us uh, one before. And then 3D print it. <laughs> so this is how it's going to look at the oh, end. Right? So this is cooking. the unfinished one. That's how it looks before it goes in the oven. And now the oven has stopped heating. So I'm going to put it in. So yeah, and then I'll show you the other one and we're gonna show it. So I'm gonna set a timer. So Mira, then you're gonna tell us the timer. Uh... Yes, um, I set one for 35 minutes, but I check periodically and put in a thin sliver of a thing. And if it comes out, clean, as in there's no sticky batter on it when you take it out, then it's probably done. So I'm going to check that at 35 minutes, and if it's not done yet, I'm going to put it in for five more minutes. Okay, love. So tell us the, uh, the show us so, the yeah. product, and uh, then what's going to happen next week? And uh, I can't wait to see you guys next week. Uh, we'll, we'll, we can stay longer, but right now she has already the product. We didn't know exactly how you guys want to do this class um so that's what it looks like and as a final oh, thing yeah can you lift it on the side more because it's hard to tell it's a bit brown like i, I can't just give me a second can you give me a second i'll give you a second either you move the computer or you this is what it looks like closer closer it's hard to tell it looks like a face the red thing yeah <laughs> that's plum so what happened is, it's hard. It does to, kind of look like a face. Yeah, but, but that's not how you serve it. You do serve it, Mira, with- Can you give me a second one? You're really, you're stepping over my ideas now. I was just about to do that. Okay. So, um. Stealing the spotlight. <laughs> yes, I am. I am my mother. So you can um, buy powdered sugar, but since quarantine started, I have not been buying different types of sugar than granulated sugar. So here's a tip, which is if you um, don't want to keep buying brown sugar because it hardens after a while and it's really hard to um, serve, then you can just mix together white sugar and molasses. And you can just do that and it's the same. And for powdered sugar, if you have a spice grinder, I'll show you what I'm doing. Here, yep, okay. This, yes. So I'm adding it to the spice grinder. And um, powdered sugar 
is what it sounds like. It's powdered sugar. Um, it's just granulated sugar, but smashed so that it has a greater surface area. And so it melts easier. So I'm going to put it in this thing, which is basically a yes, really strong blender. Yeah, there. And it's called a spice grinder. It's like a caffeine. Hmm? It's a coffee grinder. It's a grinder. It looks like yeah, a coffee, coffee grinder. Yeah, the same thing. You can yeah, it's a spice grinder. So, like, if you wanted to... Like, Mira, Rafael is making a point that it's a coffee grinder. It's, true. it's also a coffee grinder. That's true also. It, it grinds things into powder. Uh, you can use cinnamon bark or like cardamom pods because uh, it doesn't show up in nature as a powder. So like you might think of cinnamon as a powder, but it comes in bark and when you put it in this, it pulverizes it to a powder. So I'm going to do that right now. It doesn't sound awesome. I can mute myself. It, it. <laughs> Very yeah, plus on the button. It, it's very noisy. I know that, sure, for sure. <laughs> yeah, and then Mira is gonna cut a piece so you guys can see how it looks cut, that it's fluffy. And I, I mean, I feel so bad that we can't share this with you. Uh, Why don't you just mail it to us? <laughs> 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 just mail us part of the dessert. <laughs> <laughs> so I noticed. Now it looks like powdered sugar. That's like that dude that sent uh, a YouTuber a uh, full uh, salmon from Australia. I don't think it was very eatable after th that time. Yeah, we saw it. So now you can take. Well, you're always telling me to show you things. So, okay. One time a doctor sent me frozen tamales in the mail. Uh, they sent them with two day shipping, but they arrived two weeks later. <laughs> Yes. That's, that's so hilarious. You made my day, Justin. <laughs> and they've you actually stole, to... they actually had stolen an organ transport unit from their work and put the frozen tamales in it. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah, what is this next step? I'm going to explain. If she, if she mails it to me, it will arrive three weeks later. Yeah, so I'm going to put the uh, powdered sugar through a sieve and then sort of tap it so that it rains over the thing like so. And it adds a little bit of sweetness because it's not that sweet of a cake. It's sweet enough, but it's not like a birthday cake. I respect, so it's kind of like icing. And this makes it a bit more visually um, like exciting. Um, yes. But it looks really pretty once. Mira, can you cut a piece for I us? will. I'm just trying not to get powdered sugar all over everything because the sieve is full of holes, and if I just put it down, it would get everywhere. So, um, yeah, that's powdered sugar I can use later. And now I'll cut it. With a serrated knife, uh, it's what works? You need a serrated knife. Yeah, okay. Well, you explain, Mira. So I'll just cut it. A serrated knife, because she said it, I'll explain the difference. A serrated knife is one with little ridges on the knife thing. This has a straight edge. You notice? Completely straight, mm -hmm. sharp. And a serrated knife, um, I don't think we have one right now, or it's... Somewhere, okay, don't worry about it, it's somewhere. What's Big Brain about it? Okay, um, so I will cut it with this knife because it'll work because it's sharp. So yeah, some over explaining, but let's go. <laughs> <laughs> the kitten behind Justin. <laughs> He's messing around. That's horrible. By the way, Raphael, we want to see your dogs at some point. Okay. Nice one. I don't and one. I'll show you because, my... uh, because now it's a uh, we, we had a cocker spaniel that died a couple of months ago. 
No, it's very sad. Okay, look, Mira came out. Okay. No, no, no. It didn't cut that cleanly, but whatever. Um, I'm looking for her, but I can't find her. That's the key. Okay, that's the key, guys. It looks like finished product. I can't wait till mine arrives in the mail. <laughs> yep. I hope you like old eggs. Since it is one day shipping, in overnight shipping, you should be able to ship it. Now, hopefully, inspire you guys to do it. So, Mira, this has been great. Guys, it has been a pleasure to have you here. This has been so much fun. We had no idea what to expect. Uh, uh, and um, at five, I have another class, but would you guys think that come and dance? <laughs> yeah, there's 30 minutes left on the thing, so I don't think we should wait. But, um, we can, we can stop, but, uh, yeah, so yeah. next week I'll be doing biscuits, uh, buttermilk biscuits, but, um, like, like how I mentioned the sourdough biscuits earlier, uh, you can use sourdough starter if you have any, but I'm not going to suppose that you do. So I'm going to be teaching buttermilk biscuits in, in much the same way, but the baking time is a little lessened. There is one. Hey, one I, I found it in the chair. Wait. One. Ah! Oh, cute dog. For a second, I thought he was a Yorkshire Terrier because of the color <laughs> and just seeing the little thing up in the corner. It's, it's, but, it's a bit heavier than the Yorkshire Terrier. Uh, I, have a, I have a Yorkshire Terrier, but he's downstairs right now. Okay, so uh, I, I wanted to say something. What were you about to say? You lifted your hand as if you wanted oh, to say something. Um, I wanted to say one idea is instead of making one like a dessert, like oh, like the day before, what you could do is you could put it in like uh, like right before the class or something, and then at the end you could show it off, but like that's, fresh. She did it already. She did it last night, and she showed the, the finished product. It's relatively but fresh. It doesn't look much different than this. Um, a few hours, it's not, it's still pretty fresh. Um, yeah, so if, like you're worried about freshness, it's not that much of a difference. Um, our oven's not that big and like. No, what do you mean? It's a big, yeah. yeah. What do you mean the oven is not big? It's a regular size. Well, uh, he was, I, okay, whatever. Maybe that's a bad objection. I can do that if you want. If you want me to bring it out at the beginning of the class, I can I can try that out. But um, yeah, I have something from one to two, so there would just be an hour in between. Okay. So that's why I did it last night. But, yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, okay. Now, uh, but what was the point which we we might we might totally incorporate, uh, Justin? What is uh? So you're talking about to do something right before? Like if you put it in like sometime like so like this one would take 35 minutes if you put it in like 35 minutes before the class ends or something then you could take it out at the end something like that oh you mean while we are talking some other part is cooking is this what you're saying yeah yeah it's totally possible because you can do it in the other like there are two sides of the, the i could yeah. sure Okay. And it's like maybe the batter it's i'll i'll figure it out i will try the the biscuits will probably be more uh, likely to work out that way than this one. Okay. It's just because I would have to either be doing the recipe at different moments simultaneously, or I would have to have the batter already ready to put it in. Yeah. Like either way, I would have to prepare something a few hours beforehand. Yeah, and I think that would be good, Mira. You do the batter already okay. done, and then you also show them how to do the batter. Okay. Cool. Hey. This was wonderful. Thank you. Thank we'll you for coming. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> other classes, and let's do more uh, learning French and German and all kinds of things. Yep. If you okay. want, uh, I'm, I'm up for it. All right. Same here. Yeah. You, you can you. contact me if you have some question. You have my email. <laughs> yeah, I'll share. I'll share. Uh, well, you can put it on the chat. And I can also share it, but you can guys put in the chat and uh, cool. And uh, I'll save the chat. Yep. And that way it's really good. Um, so I'm giving you a moment to guys to put emails and 
Mira, you can also. Here's my mail. Oh, yeah. I should. Okay. Yeah. Why don't you put yours too? Yeah, I mean, you know, if we all share it, we're not. Um, if you. Um, okay. So we'll see each other. Yes. Uh, if you guys have time, we'll, we'll save it. Uh, also, if you have any questions, you want to contact me. Which what? He also I put also on my Facebook on if you want to contact me <laughs> over oh. there. Fantastic. So I'm going to put, I'm going to save the chat. Okay. And I have no idea, Rafael, where this save chat goes. I don't understand this, but whatever. Uh, when you say when you save the chat, it's going to be uh, like a Word document, and then when you click on it, you will have uh, the time, the name, and then you will have the. It's going to be saved on my be, computer. It's going to be saved on the computer. It's going to be a file. Okay. It's going to be a file on your computer. Got it. All right, guys. Thank you for showing up. Mira, thank you so much for doing this. And thank you very much. We'll see you. See you soon. Yep. Bye. 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 Thank you, Bye. 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 Bye.